I'm your host, Annie Bowles, and this is News Du Jour. Hey, you guys, welcome back to the news du jour. Happy Monday. So today we are strictly going to be talking about Ukraine. There's a ton of little updates to give you guys as per usual. So let's go ahead and dive in. First up, a U.S. journalist is killed in Ukraine. So police in Ukraine let us know yesterday that a video journalist by the name of Brent Renaud was killed in Ukraine outside of Kiev. He had done work for the New York Times and the like in the past, but was working independently at the time of his death. He had won prestigious awards, including a Peabody. There aren't a ton of details out yet about this his death at the time that I'm writing and recording this, but it is pretty unclear as of now whether or not he was targeted for being American or a journalist or anything along those lines, or if he was simply caught up in violence against Ukrainian citizens. So we'll definitely keep you posted on all that. Um, either scenario is definitely possible. So if we hear anything um, more about his his death, we will definitely keep you guys posted. Next up, Russian bombs land on Poland's border. So Russia has now brought the war right onto Poland's doorstep, dropping missiles right along their border with Ukraine. Now, why is this significant? Well, it all comes back to NATO and Russia's real intentions behind this war. It's always felt like this war was really more about NATO than anything else. And Poland is a NATO ally. So bringing the war right onto the verge of crossing into NATO territory, it's provocative at a minimum. And at most, it's all out aggression towards not only Poland, but all NATO members who Biden has repeatedly sworn to protect since the war began. So by kind of nudging Poland, Putin is almost nudging at Biden and all of NATO, like a very high stakes game of chicken. So next up, a prisoner of of war in Ukraine, was he used as a prop? So this is kind of a complicated story here, so stick with me on this. But a Russian military leader was captured in Ukraine when his plane was shot down on March 6th. He was then put in front of Ukrainian news cameras and admitted to bombing civilians. This was likely an attempt by Ukraine to reach the Russian people and dispel a lot of the propaganda that's being put out by the Russian government, saying that the war is not actually a war, but a peacekeeping mission. <laughs> However, a prisoner of war should never be put in front of the press, no matter the circumstances. As per Article 13 of the Geneva Convention rules, POWs are always supposed to be protected from quote-unquote public curiosity. And this means that they, quote, may not be transmitted, published, or broadcast, end quote, in any way. Because being a prisoner of war, that person is naturally under duress, no matter what. They are worried for their safety and therefore can be easily coerced into saying things that they don't really mean or really believe. Now, this man may really believe these things and may be saying them of his own volition, 
But what if he's not? Then if he's being forced to admit to international war crimes on public television, those are some dire consequences. And no matter what he's done, that is definitely against Geneva Convention rules and definitely not cool. So next up, the Senate has approved the U.S. spending budget very quickly. And the way in which this relates to Ukraine is, of course, there's a lot of money allocated in our budget right now for Ukraine. So this is part of why it was passed so quickly. So we had ended last week talking about how the budget was getting passed quickly through the House with about $1.5 trillion worth of spending mapped out. But about $3.6 billion of that was allocated for Ukraine. And now it has also passed the Senate as of Friday. Very quickly, you guys. Great news. This will keep the U.S. government up and running through September when they will take another look at the budget. The Democrats did drop a few of their top priorities, such as funding for tracking COVID and testing for COVID, etc., to get the bill passed at this critical moment, and it paid off. Now it will be sent to President Biden's desk, who is expected to sign it quickly as well. Next up, speaking of Biden, so on top of so many different types of sanctions, Biden has now announced on Friday that the U.S. would cease any normal trade relations with Russia following the lead of the European Union and other allies. So Russia will then be denied the ability to borrow money from the IMF and the World Bank, which will just further isolate their government and economy. And lastly for today, Balenciaga show in Paris references Ukraine in its inspiration. So this story obviously feels somewhat unimportant comparative to all the other stories we have covered today and definitely compared to war in general. But one thing I really love to underscore for anyone who hasn't studied art at length or fashion as an art form is that it always, always echoes the current moment. When we study art, we are almost always studying history at the same time. And the Balenciaga show in Paris was no exception. For those who don't know, Paris Fashion Week is underway right now, and Balenciaga chose to pay pay homage to global events through their show. The designer who put on the show had himself fled war in Georgia as a 12-year-old child. So for him, what's going on today is not something that can be ignored, even when it comes to the runway. He turned the catwalk into a absolute snow globe. All of the walls were white and the audience watched through glass this entire show. So the models actually trudged through snowfall and like inches of snow. You guys are like walking through in heels. It was really cool. And they were carrying what looked like trash bags or bags of their belonging. And their hair was, meanwhile, blowing behind them as lights flashed, setting this sort of fearful tone, very like like there might be bombing going on, etc. And the designer actually gifted every guest of the show an enormous t-shirt of the Ukrainian flag with a Ukrainian poem left on every chair. Demna, the designer, also wrote on the note that the war had, quote, triggered the pain of past trauma I have carried in me since 1993 when the same thing happened in my country and I became a forever refugee. Forever because that's something that stays with you. The fear, the desperation, the realization that no one wants you. End quote. This is such an excellent example of how fashion 
as an art form must always exist in the current moment and how art will always echo its time. Bravo to Demna on such a moving show. And that is the news du jour. Today, I wanted to leave you guys with the quote, the more you know about the past, the better prepared you are for the future. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider becoming a patron of our podcast. For $7.99 a month, you can unlock tons of perks like breaking news text messages so that you're never out of the loop. Tons of bonus episodes are already up there ready for you to binge and a discussion board full of networking opportunities and much more. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash sugar-free media today to become a patron. This is the best way to support our show. Our patrons make news du jour possible. But a couple other ways to support our podcast are rate and review on whatever podcast platform you use to listen, share on your social media, you have influence, tell your friends, family, and colleagues that you love news du jour and why you listen. You can also follow us on social media under sugarfreemedia.co on Instagram, just sugarfreemedia, all one word on TikTok, and sugarfree underscore media on Twitter. We also have a weekend newsletter called Dreamers Digest that's full of dreamy content recommendations for your weekend and a life update from yours truly. Sign up today on our website www.sugarfreemedia.co Our music is by Joey Lavoy and Nicholas Foster Our cover art is by Hannah Pierce Photography Our Sugar Free Media logo is by Catherine Jezik Designs Any twinkling or little footsteps you might hear in the background are by my dog Rhett. He's a rescue pup and always records with me We appreciate you listening and look forward to telling you about the news again next time on News Du Jour Broadcasting from... Oh. Oh.